Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation as I announced two hours ago in the premiere. So we have this interesting equation and this has been inspired by a math Olympiad problem. I believe it was one of the uh, Russian math Olympiad problems many years ago, but obviously there were more cosines and there were more sines. This is kind of like a simplified version of that problem. If I can find that problem, uh, I'll try to include that somewhere here in the uh, comment section or uh, try to find the link for you. So we have cosine of cosine x equals sine of sine x. And we're going to try to solve for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end, which I think is pretty interesting. Anyways, so we have this equation and this kind of looks a little confusing. Like what is the cosine of cosine? Well, you hopefully know the definition for the cosine function. Uh, in a right triangle, we could basically define it as a ratio, which is the adjacent over hypotenuse, and the sine could be opposite over hypotenuse. But if you are dealing with angles that are greater than 90 degrees, you could use the unit circle and define it as the x and y coordinate of a point. Anyway, so I'm assuming that you know those quick basic definitions of sine and cosine. And we're going to try to solve this equation. This is a this looks like a non-standard type of equation, but it's actually pretty standard. The only problem is we have different functions on different sides. So we have to make them agree. In other words, it would be nice if I could turn one of these into the other. And which one would I do? Does it matter? No, not really. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's turn the sine into a cosine. And how could you do that? I have sine alpha and I want to write it as cosine of something. How could I do that? Well, here's the idea. If two angles are complementary, in other words, their sum is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, then it will work. So we can basically replace sine alpha with cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha. Okay? So that's what you have to do. This is our angle, so you got to remember it. At, uh, this is basically the alpha in this case. Even though it's the sine of another angle, we have to take it as alpha. So here is what this looks like. Cosine of cosine x equals sine. It will be replaced with cosine, but the angle will be replaced with its complement, which is pi over 2 minus sine x. Make no mistake, we're not, we're we're not going to subtract x from pi over 2. We're going to subtract the argument, the angle, which is sine x in this case. Make sense? I hope it does. Now we're going to go ahead and solve this equation, but we have to first know how to solve cosine type equations. So let's briefly talk about it. If you have a cosine type equation like this in general, if cosine alpha is cosine beta, then this gives you two solutions. And those solutions are going to be alpha equals beta and alpha equals negative beta. You could also write this as 2 pi minus beta because negative beta basically means negative beta plus 2 pi. And of course you can keep adding multiples of 2 pi which is what we're going to do because that's going to give us all the solutions. And there are infinitely many obviously, right? Makes sense? So that's what we're going to be looking at in this problem and sometimes uh, for these kinds of equations they write the solution in a more general form as follows alpha equals negative 1 to the power n beta plus 2 n pi because as you change the values of n you're going to get negative 1 to the power even number or an odd number so on and so forth i'm not a big fan of that notation but i'd rather write it as two separate solutions so let's go ahead and apply that strategy here for the cosine equation this angle and that angle can be equal so that's one case cosine x is equal to pi over 2 plus, I mean minus, minus sine x plus 2 and pi. That's going to be my solution 1. And solution 2 is going to be cosine x. Now, how do you write the other one? It's the opposite. So it's going to be sine x minus pi over 2. And then if you want, you can also add... Um, Subtract this from 2 pi, and that's probably going to be a better idea. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and write this as 2 pi minus pi over 2 minus sine x. It's the same thing as adding, the, uh, taking the opposite and adding a 2 pi to it, plus 
to n pi. And obviously, these two could be combined into uh, a single expression. Make sense? Let's see what happens with each solution. And now we're going to look at the graph and conclude the video. So solution number one gives us the following. I have cosine x equals pi over 2 minus sine x plus 2n pi. Now, in order to be able to solve this equation, obviously, you want the variables on the same side. Let's go ahead and add sine x to both sides. We're going to get sine x plus cosine x. Again, again, it's just a matter of preference. I like to write the sine before the cosine. It's just the uh, type of OCD that I have. But you can write it other ways. Fine. Um, that's going to be okay. So we have this sine x plus cosine x is equal to pi over 2 plus 2n pi. And then from here, we should be doing the arc or the inverse function, right? Because we're trying to find, but wait a minute. We don't have a single function on the left-hand side. We have sine x plus cosine x. How do you write it? Well, we can turn it into a single function, but here's something to consider. And when I show you the graph, this is going to make much more sense, but take a look at this. Okay, let's proceed with the, uh, writing this as a single number, and then we'll look at it that way. How about that? So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and write this as sine x plus tangent of pi over 4 times cosine x because tangent pi over 4 is 1. And I can basically just write the cosine x as 1 times cosine x, can't I? But why would you do that, right? Where on earth does that come from? I know some people are going to be questioning, like, just from thin air, he grabbed it, right? Well, here's the thing. If I write it as tangent of something, then it could turn into sine over cosine. And then I could use a formula to turn this into a sum, and then I'll go from there. Make sense? Hopefully you like this idea because this is a strategy that we use, and I believe I use this in one of my videos. Anyways, cosine pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And you can basically, uh, what you can do is multiply both sides by that. And if you do, uh, you're going to get rid of the fraction. So let's go ahead and do it. Actually, let me go ahead and multiply everything by cosine pi over 4. So we're going to get sine x times cosine pi over 4 plus sine pi over 4 times cosine x equals cosine pi over 4. On the right-hand side, that's going to turn into root 2 over 2 multiplied by a pi over 2 plus 2n pi. All right. So here's what we get from here. And then we can basically turn the left-hand side into sine of x plus pi over 4. And then it's going to equal this number, root 2 over 2, multiply by pi over 2 plus 2n pi, and so on and so forth. So what is that going to look like? So root 2 pi over 4 plus root 2n pi. Don't worry too much about this. These are just adding some multiples of pi times root 2. But take a look at this. We have the sine of an angle equals this number. What does that number look like? Now think about it. Pi is about 3.14. When you multiply uh, that by root 2, root 2 is about 1.4. These, The product of these two things is going to be like 5.2-ish, 5.3-ish, I don't know, whatever, something like that. But it's definitely going to be greater than 5. And when you divide the product by 4, you're going to get a number that is greater than 1, and that can't be equal to the sine of a number. Therefore, we're not going to have any solutions. But you could also find that out here because sine x plus cosine x, the maximum value for that is root 2, if you know the rules. And pi over 2 is 1.5-ish, and that's definitely greater than root 2. That's why we're not going to have any real solutions. The second one shouldn't give you real solutions either. You can check it out, but I'm going to show you the graph and finish up. Here we go. The graph of cosine cosine x and sine of sine x, very interesting. They get so close, but they do not intersect. And they kind of look like sine and cosine with a twist. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time, which is in two hours with the trigonometric expression. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.